All right, what's going on, everyone? Today is Wednesday. Recording a little bit later than I usually do, um, because I was busy yesterday, so couldn't get this in. But here we are today. We're doing, you know, it's kind of nice out today, and you know, got a lot of things going on. A lot of things going on for uh, Strong Tower Nutrition, and you know, just doing some things, man, and just you know, doing what I got to do. So, didn't have a very didn't have a very uh, busy weekend. Went out to um, a carnival, the infamous St. John's Carnival in uh, Wilmington, Delaware. Um, went Friday night, Saturday night. Still amazes me that people let their kids outside their house, especially their daughters, outside their house with the stuff they're wearing. Like, <laughs> I was like, oh man, like when I was a kid, okay, I understand, like, looking at girls and stuff like that and whatever. But now when you start growing up and you think, hey, that could be my daughter. Oh, hell no. I can't take that. Like, girl, you can see their ass cheeks. I was like, what? You know, I, I, don't, know, I don't know. I'm just a different, different kind of person, I guess. I don't know. To each his own, I guess. If you're okay with your letting your daughter or son go out, like, dress, like, whatever, you know, then that's fine. I don't I don't care, but, like, if it was me, man, like, I just would not let my daughter out like that, you know. It's a shame, like, and that's one thing, if I ever had a kid, like, I want to teach them not to need that approval from the opposite sex. You know, well, even the same sex. You know, you don't you don't need that approval. You like being your own person. Don't dress just because you think a guy wants to see you dress that way, because they're only gonna like be there for one thing. You know what I mean? I've been in that situation, and you know, as a younger kid, and I realized that, and I look back at the, those times, I'm just like, I don't want a guy thinking about my daughter that way, like the way I thought about girls when I was that age, you know, so, but yeah, so that was my weekend, just about, spent two nights there, didn't do any rides or anything, did a lot of, um, I was actually going to do a video of because I'm big into videography and stuff like that so I was going to do a video and the first night was good because our friends brought their kids and I was like filming them and all that kind of stuff like having fun and doing rides and getting some cinematic shots and then but Saturday night it was just me and my wife and my uh, sister-in-law and her husband so it was kind of weird because I was filming other people and um they kept giving me weird looks so I felt like a creep so I kind of got uncomfortable and then I just stopped so now I don't have enough um footage to do a video so that kind of sucks because I just wanted to do something cool for people to see but yeah that was about my weekend but I really want to get into yesterday the U.S. women's national team Finally, the World Cup starts. Finally, we get to see the USA put out something good um, internationally. And especially being the women's team, I love watching this women's team because it's just like they're a real team. It's kind of like watching the Spurs play basketball. Like they play as a team, you know. I mean, the Warriors, some, you know, they kind of play as a team. But, um,. Watching the USA, and soccer is different. You have to play as a team. You can't just be one person. 
You know, you can't you can't play one on one type style of soccer. You know, soccer is all team. You know, you gotta make runs. You gotta look for other people. Um, and the USA women's team just they just are so close, close knit that they just know what each other is gonna do. So they played Thailand yesterday and just like absolutely like thrashed them. Like they shit on them. And I felt bad. I was like <laughs> I turned I turned the uh game on and I was kind of like watching like the play by play. And since I couldn't watch the live feed and um it was I believe it was four nothing coming into the second half. And uh, I was like, oh, they're at least going to get six, you know. Within two minutes, they get six. I'm like, oh, shit. And then um, and then next minute comes the seven. Next couple minutes comes eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And I was like, oh, my gosh. I was like, I was like stop, stop. You know? <laughs> you know, I was like, oh, that's got to hurt the Thailand people, you know. Like, I've been on the other side of that many times. I don't think I've ever been on the the right side of that. I think I've always been on the um, on the the worst side. You know, there's a there's a school that we played when I was in high school, and they would just beat us all the time. And honestly, a lot of people were talking about how the USA ran up the score, right? And I remember playing that team in high school that would always beat us about like eight nothing, ten nothing, stuff like that. And towards the end of the game, they wouldn't go past ten. They would just play around with the ball. I'd rather them after I'd rather them go for a goal. I'd rather them keep scoring than just playing around with it. Because it made us feel stupid, it made us look stupid. I'd rather them just keep scoring, honestly. Because then I'd feel like, oh shit, we just really can't stop them. You know, but when they're just playing around with the ball and our guys are just like running from ball to ball, like person to person and just following the ball around. Oh, my gosh. It was just embarrassing to be a part of and watching watching it back on film. It was just embarrassing. And, uh, you know, it was so, yeah, I mean, I'd much rather. And also, this is the World Cup. Like, don't complain about the team running up the score. You know, we're all professionals here. So how about you stop them? You know, or how about you get a goal back to make yourself get some so they don't shut you out. But people that are complaining about that have just never been a part of that kind of team or they've never been a part of the sport or what. Because I'd much rather get keep getting scored on and lose 20 to nothing or 13 to nothing than them just passing around the ball and playing with us you know it makes you feel low it makes you feel like you shouldn't be there which it takes it takes a lot to make the world cup so at least thailand made the world cup so they're not scrubs you know they're just not up to the par of the usa team who's defending their world cup title that they won in 2015 that's all it is you're gonna play teams like that and guarantee you when um, USA has uh, Chile coming up and then they have Sweden those are gonna be two um, pretty tough teams so guarantee that's not gonna be 13 nothing um, and that's another thing USA is very good at um, scoring well, the women's team is, which is funny because it's total opposite from the men's team. The men's team can't score worth a shit, but the women just score at will all the time, anytime they want. But, uh, but that, yeah, that's another thing. That brings me to this. The U.S. women's soccer team is the best team besides basketball. We all we all know that. Basketball is pretty much America's sport. But soccer is different. Soccer is an international sport first before it ever we ever adopted it. We're the only ones that call it soccer. Everyone else calls it football. So having our women's team 
be the best in the world is on another level. We're a different animal. So, why are they being paid so little? Well, not even that question, because I understand that. I understand it's, it's driven by the consumer. You know, not many people watch women's soccer, which I don't know why. When you have such a good team, such a dominating team, why don't you want to watch that? Why wouldn't you want to be a part of that? You know, and witness that. Because watching the guys team just frustrates me. You know, I know I understand you're playing against other guys and other guys teams are better, but just something about this U.S. men's team is just annoying. It's annoying to watch. It's annoying to try and pay attention to. Um, Because a lot of times they just, they forget the fundamentals. I think, you know, and their defense is awful and it's just another, ugh. It's just, it's just hard to watch. So watching the women and um, it's just so much more fun. It's so much more fun watching them play together as a team because they are so close-knit. Like even their team now is close with all the other previous teams that have made the Olympics and made the World Cup and all that kind of stuff. They're so close with that, what is it, 99 team that started it all that – um that really like set the tone for um, the rest of the teams after. I think they were the first uh, U.S. women's team to win the World Cup. I think it was 99, I believe. <clears throat> so what my question is, is why do the U.S. men get paid so It's not just getting paid more. It's getting paid so much more than... The U.S. women's team. That doesn't make sense to me. If I was um, sponsors or try or looking for endorsements and stuff like that, why aren't you picking these women? I don't understand. You know what I mean? Why aren't more products that are more like girl and women driven, like grabbing these women up and giving them what they deserve? You know, because they're making more money in endorsements, really, than than they're playing. Which I can understand, but still, I don't understand how the U.S. men are getting so much just playing soccer in the U.S. How is that so big? People are still going to watch that? People in that, I mean, that's why I'm not comparing to the other international teams. Like, in this article... So, yeah. Let me see. Uh. So, okay. So, let me see. Okay, I can't find it. Fuck it. So, the last article I read mentioned that... Okay, so Alex Morgan makes, like... Alex Morgan, best female soccer player probably in the world. Or second best, whatever. Um, she's top two, top three in the world. Whereas... Clint Dempsey... The best soccer player on the um, on America's team, which doesn't mean too much. He makes around like six million a year, I think, with endorsements and with his um, his actual base salary from uh, the team that he plays for. Six million. Alex Morgan makes like a million. So she gets a million from endorsements, and then three—I think three hundred thousand—is her base salary for 
um, the team she plays for uh, in the uh, in the U.S. Why is that so drastically different? You know what I mean? So, I don't know. I don't know why things have to be that way. Um, a lot of times business is hard to understand, especially when it comes to professional sports. Because, you know, <clears throat> women aren't going to... It's hard because... The purchase number of tickets and the numbers watched on TV and all that kind of stuff is so much more men driven um, because of the talent and because of the competition and it has nothing to do with men versus women I think in a lot of sports um, I think it just has to do with the talent level and the competition level and all that kind of stuff. So I think the men's competition in the NBA and the NFL is just so much, I don't know. I think it just draws people in more so than women competition, you know. But I like, well, when it comes to soccer, I love watching women's soccer. Because one, those girls will take a hard hit and get right back up. They don't flop. As much as the uh, the men do, that's that's a, that's one thing I really love, and the fact that the USA a team had the the USA team women's soccer team is the best team in the world. That is that needs to be understood. Like I don't think people understand how like important that is. The women's the USA is the best in the world at soccer internationally. Like, I think when you understand, if you're a soccer fan and you watch the sport, you understand how big the sport is around the world. Not so much here, but around the world. And to be the best in the world is just a different animal. At a sport where the whole world plays. It's different, like, basketball and, yeah, the whole world plays basketball, but they don't really, it's not as big as it is here. You know, it's like the USA team. Like, if the USA team in rugby was the best in the world, you're on another level with that. You know, because you know the whole world plays rugby. You know the whole world has countries that are the best at rugby. You know what I'm saying? Like, if we were just, like, like competing against the All Blacks and just, like, whooping their ass, that's... Uh, <sighs> That's how you know we've made it. Because when you're best at something when that, that every country plays, you know, that's when you know you've done something right. <clears throat> it's like when um, the U.S. gets gold medals and stuff in the Olympics, like track and field and all that kind of th all those kind of things. Because you know the rest of the world does those things. There's going to be certain countries that are better. Like in the Winter Olympics, like, yeah, we have a lot of good stuff here. But you know Canada, they do that for a living year-round because it's always cold. You know? Yeah, there's places in the U.S. that are always cold and stuff. But a lot of times it's like you got to create it for yourself. But, um... Jesus. You notice my dog picks this time to when I do my podcast, she decides to go out and wreak havoc now. The whole day she was sleeping. The whole day. The whole morning. She was sleeping. Until now. That's great. So what else happened um this week? This week we had um, the Raptors and the Warriors play, was it Monday night? And the Raptors blew it. They had a chance to win on their home turf. You know, they had a chance because, you know, now Durant's out for good. Because if he would have stayed in, he was dropping 40. 
Like he wasn't going anywhere. And they were gonna they were gonna kill the Raptors on their home court, so you know what I mean? I don't know what they're doing. I mean <clears throat> the Sixers should have beat them. And I don't know, man. It's just I just can't stand NBA teams that can't win on their home floor. You know, during you're up three games to one. Like win win the game. Then you win the finals. That's all you gotta do. Just win the game. You have Kevin Durant sitting out. Why can't you hit any shot? Why can't you, you know, um, not commit turnovers? Why can't you just play fundamental basketball and just win the game? That doesn't make sense to me. Because now you got to go back to Golden State and you got to play on their home court. And it's not it's not that much fun when you win when you win away, you know. Like it's more fun when you get to win at home in front of the Toronto crowd that hasn't seen a ever seen a finals win you know it's their first time in the finals i believe and then the first time they'll win a, be able to win a finals but you know what's funny is that this <laughs> you you would think you would know the reaction of a team or a city that has not won a championship before. You would think you would know their reaction. They would be excited. They would be like, they would go above and beyond. You know, like Toronto is huge about the Raptors. You know, and maybe not just Toronto, like all of Canada, because it's the only basketball team in the NBA. So that's why when I saw this, I was I was just dying laughing. So this is a uh, Kawhi. La- <laughs> just. All right, here we go. If the Raptors win the NBA title, what do you think this will mean for Canada and the Toronto Raptors? You've already won with the San Antonio Spurs. You've seen the way it impacted that community. What do you think this will do for Canada? (laughs) Um, I'm really not sure. Um, I guess you really have to ask somebody on the street or one of our fans. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's a long time waiting. They're going to be excited. Um, I mean, they are, they're already excited just as, just being here for the first time. Um, they're going crazy after the Eastern Conference Finals. And I don't know. There's no telling. Um, you got to ask. Yeah, bro. <clears throat> There's no telling what they're going to do when you win the finals. If you win the finals, who <laughs> who knows? Yo, that dude is crazy, but I love Kawhi Leonard. I love his attitude. I love the way he plays. And um, even though he's just oblivious to everything, it's just like very good dude. And, you know, I respect the way that he handles himself on and off the court. He doesn't go out and party all the time. He works on his game. You know, people are already now (coughs) comparing him to parts of Michael Jordan's game. Not Michael Jordan um altogether, but like parts of his game that he w- used to play or whatever. But I thought that was hilarious and I am rooting for the Raptors because I'm tired of seeing the Warriors win. Um the Warriors, you know, I think they will probably come back. Even without Kevin Durant, I think um I think DeMarcus Cousins kind of gives them that edge, and then Steph Curry has got to turn it on. Him and Klay Thompson just got to turn it on. But, um, you know, Raptors just got to squeeze one out. You know, you got two chances. I wouldn't take a chance on um, taking it to Game 7. So, if I was them, I would step it up a little bit, man. Oh, man. Ooh. So UFC 238. UFC 238 was on Saturday night. So you had main events versus... You had uh, Jessica I versus... uh, Was it Catalina? Cass... Cassalina? Catalina? Shevchenko? Uh... 
Cowboy Cerrone and Tony Ferguson, and then you had um, Henry Cejudo and Marlon Morais. Morais wasn't familiar with him, but they play like these little like this little like edited like video type thing about all three fights, and then they go to like each individual person, and they. Um, and they go through their, their training and their life and all this kind of stuff. And it's pretty cool to watch. And you learn a little bit about each fighter. So it was cool to see. And you learned about... Uh, and that's why it's cool to watch the fight after you already see that. Because now you know a little personal stuff about the fighter. And you can choose who you want to root for. So I wasn't really rooting for one for anyone in the um, in the Jessica I versus uh, Shevchenko fight because I've seen Shevchenko fight at one thirty five and she's a monster and <laughs> anyone that steps in the cage should be absolutely scared of her and because I mean she's the best at Muay Thai and kickboxing her kicks are you can't even see them you won't even see her kick coming which is exactly what happened to Jessica I you know she got kicked to the body kicked to the body kicked to the body and then one kick she tried to go down and block her body but then left that whole left that whole face and head open and boom kick to the head brutal I thought she died. I <laughs> I was I was taken back so hard. I was just like <gasps> You know, I literally thought and she didn't get up for a while. She it took her a minute to get up. Like Shevchenko like went through her like bow. She bowed to her whole t- her to Jessica I's whole team and to Dana White and all these other people and then she did her little dance and everything and Jessica I was still laying on the ground. They had like five, six doctors around her and she was still laying on the ground. She woke up finally, probably after three minutes maybe, and said, did I just get knocked out? She had no idea. I was like, oh, poor girl. I felt so bad. That kind of stuff is hard to watch, but um, it makes you feel better about it when she gets back up. Because I thought she died. I really thought like... (laughs) You know, I don't know if there's ever been a death in UFC, but that was pretty close to it. Like, watching that and then watching it in slow motion doesn't do it justice. You got to watch it in the full, like, the full thing just because you can hear the sound and everything. Like, oh, it was awful. But, um, so of course she won that fight. I think it was in, was that in two rounds? And then the devastating one. You had uh, Cowboy Cerrone and you had uh, Tony Ferguson. Tony Ferguson is just a different animal. Different animal, man. He just... (laughs) He's all around the place. He's got so many different um, ways he can come at you. He's always going to put pressure on you. You know, uh, Cowboy had him in the first round. And I think Tony was just like getting the kinks out and all that kind of stuff because in the second round he came full force and like he messed up uh cowboy's face just completely destroyed it and then of course like if you saw it there's a uh tony hit him with a late hit which was uh people were complaining about but um i don't know i don't know what to do with that I don't know what to do. I think there should be some kind of repercussions for a late hit. You know, you could like have some points taken off or something. But um but in the beginning of the third round, um Cowboy blew like blood out of his nose. And then all of a sudden all this air just swelled up his eye like a like I don't even know what it was like like a balloon and then Cowboy's like touching his eye like oh what's happening like he was like felt it blowing up and um 
and then they called the fight. So Ferguson won that, and he'll most likely be fighting the winner of uh, Dustin Poirier and Khabib. So I really want to see. I really want Dustin to win, but I really want to see Ferguson and Khabib fight. So I'm always torn when it comes to UFC fights. You know, I'm always like for someone, but then I want to see a different fight in the future. So I don't know. That was that. That was probably the most the most entertaining ones. <clears throat> But, um, yeah, love watching those kind of finishes that, you know, and the kind of skills like uh, Shevchenko has. And, oh, my gosh. Just scary to watch. And then people think they're on steroids and all that kind of stuff. And whatever. Just whatever. <laughs> like, shut up with the whole steroid thing. It's so old. You know, like now, oh, hold on, let me take a sip of my water for this one. So now we got Arnold Schwarzenegger calling for um, testing in bodybuilding. Okay. Even if they did have drug testing, it's going to be weak as hell. They're going to get, you know, they're going to have certain orders to like not test for this, not test for that. So guys could still use because you're not going to have, even back in the day when they used to test, guys were using stuff. So what is Arnold talking about? You know, the only reason he's saying this, or even if he does end up doing it, the only reason they want to do this is to get on like ESPN or something. They want to get on TV. They want to get nationwide on television so they don't have to stream and stuff like that. Like I see what he's doing. You know, and I understand it, but you're not, if you're actually physically going to drug test, think about what kind of bodybuilders are you going to produce? Are you still going to get the mass? Are you still, maybe you get more mass and less gut. So I know that's another thing that Arnold's trying to get and that he's trying to do with the sport is bring in the gut that a lot of guys deal with because it's disgusting. And quit blaming it on um, eating carbs. Like, just suck it up and just say, like, you're on stuff. Like, just because you ate so many carbs before you went out isn't going to make you your stomach that distended. You know, there's something else pushing it out. You know, it's like... It's like me um, not eating... Compared to when I just ate. You know, yeah, I could push my stomach out farther. But it's definitely not going to hang over and just look like crazy pushed out. You know what I mean? You can still push it out. But it's not as, it's not going to look like the stomachs that these guys have, man. It's just... You could tell there's something else um, pushing it out. You know? And if you're if you're just eating carbs then and that's what's helping your making your stomach distended, tighten up. Squeeze your squeeze your abs harder. Keep it tight throughout the whole session and work on that and practice that. Don't let it sit there and hang and it looks disgusting. You know, it takes focus away from everything else. Because everyone's just looking at your belly. So I can see why Arnold wants to um, drug test, and when I say Arnold, you know, I'm obviously I'm talking about Arnold Schwarzenegger, um, because now he's getting more into the, more into promoting his competitions and more into the bodybuilding industry, and away from like the government stuff and all that kind of thing. And um, I think he's doing more acting, but he's still training, man. He still looks good. I think he's like in the seventies. Um, still looks good and. You know, still doing a damn thing, and I just don't know how harsh or how how hard they're going to be drug testing these athletes, you know. But I can't imagine it's going to be to the extent like the UFC does, you know what I mean? I understand the whole thing about genetics, but genetics only takes you so far. 
You know, how are you? You can't tell me that you're 5'5 five, five and 250 pounds shredded or 230 pounds even shredded without taking something. Don't tell me that's natural because it's not. You know what I mean? If you're 5'5, five, five, um, you're probably going to get shredded about like 170s, 180s. You probably won't even hit the 200s shredded. You can hit the 200s like off season. Or 230s, you know. I think that's the highest I ever got. I think I, the highest I've been was 235. And I'm 5'9". And I had trouble breathing and stuff. Like, going up and down stairs. So, I can't imagine you being 5'8", 5'9", or even lower than that. Like, a lot of guys are. And weighing 230 pounds. Shredded. Not even all season, like, shredded. So that means the off season you're probably, you know, two fifties, two sixties. There's no way without taking something that you're eating naturally and all that kind of. You know what I mean? There's no way. So we'll see. We'll see how long it takes to get them to do that, and we'll see if Arnold goes through with it. We'll see how far they would actually take it. How how deep into the steroid. Um, twilight zone that they're going to take it how deep into the steroid um wormhole are they going to take it you know what i mean because there's a lot there's a lot there's a lot of new stuff that people are taking and a lot of older stuff so we'll see i mean i think arnold did it mostly with just testosterone i think if i'm not mistaken i'm pretty sure i think i don't because i'm not sure if like deca and debo and winstrol and all that stuff was out back then um so I think he was using tests and probably something else. But now guys are using insulin and GH and stuff like that, you know. Um But I don't know. I mean, that's something interesting that we'll have to see. I honestly wouldn't be for it, but if it if it does make the guys keep the size and then take down the stomachs, I'm all for it because I'm tired of seeing that. Really tired of seeing that. But from bodybuilding, we're gonna I'm gonna move on and um I wanna see if a lot of you guys agree with these because I think I do. Um It's the eight most hated exercises. So when I said that, what just came to your mind? Cause You know what came to my mind is burpees. So we'll see what number, if that comes on here or not. And what number that is. So we'll start from number 8. So number 8 is actually the bent over row. So why would the bent over row be one of the most hated? I think it's it's because it's one of the heavy lifting movements. And you have to bend over in a strict position. And you have to hold yourself there. So I think that um, is uncomfortable for people. And it takes a lot for people to do it correctly. So I think that's one of the things that um, that people hate about it. So number seven is a stiff leg deadlift. Either with barbells or, a dum- or dumbbells. Um... Stiff leg deadlifts another bent over one that you have to do correctly and it does it does hurt. <laughs> if your um, hamstrings are tight and you can't bend over that far and you're like constantly working your hamstring, you know, it's it gets uh stressful. And also like holding that posture and keep and bending from your hips. A lot of people have issues bending from their hips. Most people want to like lean or um, roll their back when they bend over. But for me, I think those two, like the bend of a row and the stiff leg, that's not one of my most hated, I don't think. Number six is, though. Number six is running. Um, I played soccer my whole life, and I hate running. <laughs> you know what I mean? But... um. I don't know. I think it's different when you play a sport. Like, but running in general, like just running on the side of the road, I can't take that. You know, I can only do it for so long. 
But during a sport, I can run. If I'm playing something, I can run. I have no problem with that. But just running just for clearing my head or just running by myself is annoying, and I don't really do it. I just walk on the treadmill. But um, you know what I've noticed is a lot of people that just start out like trying to lose weight, they always go towards running first. I'm like, why? I guess like they think that's what's going to help them lose weight faster. I don't know. But you know what it's going to do? It might help you lose weight faster, but it's also going to put pressure and pain and inflammation on your joints faster because you're starting at a heavier weight and you're putting pressure on each step that you take. So I think when you're overweight and you're trying to lose weight, I think running um, should just you know, hold off for until you lose about 20 pounds. Um, number five is the leg press. I don't know why the leg press would be one of the worst exercises. It's one of the easiest ones because you're in a sitting position and you're just pressing. You know, and you can press pretty much a lot of weight in that position. So, it's, I mean, it says because it's the uncomfortable nature of being jammed into a compact position. But I never had a problem with that. That's probably one of my favorite ones just because I get to chill. Especially if I'm doing legs and after you just did squats and other stuff, you're, you're like relieved to sit on the leg press. You know, it sucks once you get started, but... Um, you kind of get to rest a little bit on the leg press, even though you're, it's still painful in your legs. And number four is the close grip pull down. I do hate the close grip pull down compared to the wide grip pull down. I think just because you get a lot more tightness and fatigue in your biceps and also like the inside of your lats. Um, but other than that, I don't think it was one of the worst exercises. And number three, burpees. There it is. Burpees, I would rank as number one. You know, I hate burpees, which is why I don't do them. I make other people do them. <laughs> because they, you know, the old saying is, you know, the one thing that you hate the most is the one that's going to be most effective. Which is why the top two are the most hated. Because I believe, in my opinion, they're the most effective. Which are the deadlift and the barbell squat. <clears throat> so the deadlift is one of the heavy movements. It's a powerlifting movement. It's a full body exercise. So you have to pull weight off the floor. You know, and doing it correctly... Um, can be annoying for people that don't really do it. Um, I don't really see it as annoying. The movement itself, I don't mind. But it's when I start getting up to lifting heavy, I'm like, ugh. I'm just kind of get exhausted from it. Uh, exhausted from it, and I don't know. I'm just like, oh, do I want to do this? I don't. And you gotta kind of force yourself because it's it's heavy weight, man, and you just wanna. Even if you're doing it like five times, three times, one time. You know, you got to be in a certain mindset for that. And then also same thing for me with the um, barbell squat. You know, I don't mind the movement at all. But when it comes to the heavy weight and controlling your breathing and contracting your lats. And even just one rep, you know, it's the struggle of getting back up. You know, and just holding that weight on your back. But I love that as a metaphor. You know, I think that's my favorite metaphor of life is the same as like a barbell squat. You know, it's easy to hold it up on your shoulders, but then life starts pressing you down. So what are you going to do with it? You're going to get down to the floor and just dump it? Or are you going to push yourself back up you know but I would agree I would agree with the top three 
The other ones I'm not sure about. Uh, definitely, I think running would be higher for me. I think running would be number four. And instead of barbell squat, I would say front squat. I hate front squats more than I do back squats. But that's just me. So if any of y'all listen to this, you know, find me on Instagram. Let me know. It's um, at Strong Tower Nutrition or at Big Bean Ham 820 are my two Instagrams that I'm on the most. And yeah, let me know your most hated exercise. And also your favorite. Let me see. Where are we at on time? I think we're good. So, guys, thanks for listening. Um, If you go to um, stnutrition.com for all your supplement needs, you know, for working out in the gym or just feeling better in life, we have Run Run Everything Labs products. And since we got Father's Day coming up, we're doing a Father's Day sale where you can get 20% 20% off your order or off one product. I forget. No, it's one product. So you just got to type in um, dad20 in the uh, promo code at when, you, when you're checking out. And you'll get 20% off a product and that'll take off your order. And what else we got? I think that's about it. Don't be shy to let us know what your how your products are, guys. I mean, leave reviews. Um, tell us how it tasted. Tell us how it made you feel. All that kind of stuff, man. I want to hear about it. So, shout out us on your Instagram, on your Facebook, whatever. Like, Strong Tower Nutrition on anything. So, Instagram, Strong Tower Nutrition. Facebook, Strong Tower Nutrition. STNutrition.com Thanks guys for listening. I'm Ben Hamrick, owner of STNutrition.com, Strong Tower Nutrition. This is the Strong Tower Podcast, and we're out. Peace.